Hello everyone. So today we are discussing cystic fibrosis, which is very very common in uh, exams and it is often asked in the external examinations. So let's discuss what is cystic fibrosis. So to start with cystic fibrosis, you should know that this is an autosomal recessive disorder. It's an autosomal recessive. So which, which means that two chromosomes are affected. When both the chromosomes are present, so there is only one in four chance. The one is to four chance. When the, out of four ch children of the carrier uh, parents, there is one in four chances because both need to be affected to for autosomal recessive whereas in dominant one is enough so cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disorder and yes it is genetic disorder as you know and it is because of the CFTR gene which is present in chromosome number 7 so this thing you must know this thing so cystic fibrosis, this is transfemin receptor 7, number 7. It's on chromosome number 7. So how we remember this? It is cystic fibrosis, that is number 7. Okay. So it is the defect is in chromosome number 7. And remember, this is a monogenetic disorder or monogenic disorder, not a polygenic disorder. So, so like sickle cell anemia, this is this. autosomal recessive, monogenic, and the problem is in the CFTR which is a protein and it is uh, made, governed by the chromosome number 7 and this protein is responsible for chloride channels specifically though it also indirectly affects the sodium channels but typically what happens when there is a defect in this one CFTR then there is a defect in chloride channels which you have to remember chloride channels so let's see what happens what is the pathophysiology here what happens in lungs sweat and pancreas so what happens in lungs so these are the airways okay what happens in lungs so in lungs there is there is increased sodium absorption and there is decreased chloride secretion this happens in lungs so there is this chloride secretion is stopped it's not working because this chloride channel is governed by cftr so now when this is not working so as a result this chloride channel is not working so what happens there is no chloride in the airways as a result less chloride so decreased chloride means the as a result there decrease water amount so what happens here is dehydrated airways dehydrated airways so airways are dehydrated means what means the mucus mucus that is present here it cannot be cleared by the ciliary upbeating motion because the mucus is thick so what is the pathophysiology here there is increased sodium absorption increased sodium absorption remember increased sodium absorption from the airways and most interesting thing is that there is decreased chloride secretion okay so this is in affected in lungs so what happens there is thick mucus secretions which cannot be cleared by the respiratory tract what happens in sweat gland sweat gland is very much different from this lung pathology so what happens in sweat gland so let's say this is a sweat gland so in sweat gland before the sweat goes out of the body there is sodium and chloride are reabsorbed so in cystic fibrosis because of defective CFTR gene this is not done there cannot be no reabsorption no reabsorption so see chloride sodium and chloride are lost in the sweat lost in sweat so there is salty sweat we can say sweat become very very salty because sodium and chloride are lost so what happens in sweat gland in pathology? There is decreased absorption of sodium and chloride. No reabsorption we can see. So here what happens in lungs? There is chloride is not secreted and increased sodium absorption. Increased sodium absorption with defective chloride secretion. So chloride is not secreted means this chloride is not secreted. Here 
chloride and so sodium are not reabsorbed that's why it is lost in the sweat and sweat becomes salty what happens in pancreas so in pancreas now suppose this is a pancreatic duct this is a pancreatic duct which secretes the our pancreatic secretions so we need to go here the pancreatic duct system okay let me zoom it what happens pancreatic duct is chloride need to be absorbed back so when chloride is absorbed back then what happens the bicarbonate is secreted there is bicarbonate secretion so this is an exchange mechanism so if chloride is not secreted or not reabsorbed sorry if chloride is not reabsorbed into the pancreas gland then bicarbonate cannot be secreted so means decrease chloride reabsorption as a result decrease bicarbonate secretion and when there is a lot less bicarbonate secretions there is less water and as a result the pancreatic secretions cannot go out or it is thick exocrine secretions of the pancreas gland as a result there is pancreatic insufficiency and it can cause self destruction of the pancreas gland causing like uh, symptoms of pancreatitis okay so remember that these three things are very different so uh, let me repeat in the lungs sodium is absorbed more chloride is secreted less okay so less decreased chloride secretion in that takes place in lungs what happens sweat gland decreased chloride reabsorption and what happens in pancreas decreased chloride reabsorption so because of decreased chloride reabsorption there is decreased bicarbonate secretion because chloride and bicarbonate is chloride bicarbonate exchange mechanism is here exchange mechanism so until and unless chloride is not reabsorbed back into the pancreas gland bicarbonate cannot be secreted into the pancreatic duct so if there will be no bicarbonate there will be thick secretions because it bicarbonate will uh, carry along with sodium sodium will pull water so secretions will become watery and it will then move to the second part of the duodenum so that is the pathophysiology that occurs in cystic fibrosis so it is an autosomal recessive so one out of four chances if there is four children and the problem is in a cftr located in the chromosome 7 okay now what happens in clinical features So how to remember the clinical features here? It's very simple here. So what happens? What are the clinical features in cystic fibrosis? We take it like that: the blood pressure is so underestimated. Okay, that is my pneumonia. Blood pressure is so underestimated. So B for bronchiectasis. and P for pancreatic insufficiency then I for intestinal problems intestinal dysfunction then S for sweat glands U for urogenital dysfunction So when you write the clinical features, you write it in these five headings. So bronchiectasis. So along with the bronchiectasis, you have to write all the lung function, lung uh, clinical features. Like there will be persistent cough. There will be persistent cough with sputum production, and that sputum, you know, it will be very thick most of the time. It is greenish in color. Sometimes in severe cystic fibrosis, there is hemoptysis also. Along with that, don't forget there will be nasal polyp in 10% of cases. So sinusitis plus polyps are very common in cystic fibrosis. Then coming to the pancreatic insufficiency, we know that pancreatic exocrine secretion is very, very strong enough and powerful and which is not being released from the pancreas gland. 
so obviously there will be symptom of pancreatitis so pain abdomen vitamin malabsorptions and fatty stool or steatorrhea are common so there is malabsorption of fats fats will be totally malabsorbed malabsorption of fats leading to steatorrhea and steatorrhea and vitamin malabsorption like adek fat fat soluble vitamins and all the clinical features of pancreatitis what is in intestinal dysfunction the same thing happens in intestine also because there is this uh, intestinal secretion intestine become dehydrated we know the cystic fibrosis is basically a dehydration condition so there will be lot of uh, the intestinal in the intestine the secretion will be very very dehydrated so it will be thick so it is more prominent in the newborn babies when there will be a meconium ileus meconium ileus okay so which is very prominent in newborn babies and it is also uh, intestinal dysfunction yes it is common in children also and sweat glands because of increased production of sodium and chloride there will be salty sweat salty sweat that's why often it is a cystic fibrosis often it is first it is um, alarmed or warned by the mother who when she tries to kiss her baby then she finds it little bit salty and that's when she takes it to the physician so because of increased secretion of sodium and chloride so urogenital dysfunctions so in urogenital dysfunction you have to write there is late puberty in both males and females late puberty infertility in all both male and females why because there is decreased sperm count decreased sperm count so these are the basic things that you will find in cystic fibrosis that is the pneumonic b p i s u so this is blood pressure is so underestimated so b for bronchiectasis that goes for all the lung signs and symptoms p for pancreatitis same signs and symptoms i for intestinal signs and symptoms like meconium ileus sweat glands salt and sweaty so sweat plus there will be signs of dehydration because lots of fluid will be lost along with that then infertility in erogenital dysfunctions late puberty and decreased sperm count so this is a genetic disease though, so there is no permanent cure for that and treatment is basically symptomatic treatment so like how to get relief from the mucus physiotherapy okay and these are an antibiotic support is always preferred because there is prevalent infections like staphylococcus and pseudomonas infections that goes with cystic fibrosis okay so that's all for cystic fibrosis thank you very much